Hello, everybody. This is Adam for the week seven unit A and B. Just a little video to help you get ready. Now, let me just explain why I make these videos. Okay. So, first, this video is just to help you for class. You, so, you do not have to watch it. This video, I just make it to help people that want to learn. And sometimes students tell me, you know, having an English speaking teacher is a little difficult. So I have made this video with the English and Korean subtitles below. So please click that. And I just make this video to help you. So again, you don't have to watch it. It's just here to help. And I know some students don't want to study English. That's okay. Or maybe you think you hate English. The key word there is you think you hate English. Now, maybe you had some bad English teachers in the past. I understand. I had a bad French teacher when I was growing up. My French is not very good. But the goal of this class is to give you a chance to enjoy English and maybe learn. And that's just what I said. So my goal is to try and make English fun and useful. I'm not pushing you. You don't have to do it. This is my goal. And I hope there are a few people at the end who say, oh, thank you, teacher. Thank you for making it a little more easy and a little more enjoyable. So if you want to learn, this book is amazing. And I'm a very good teacher who really enjoys doing his job. And if you don't want to learn, that's your choice, and I will not push you, okay? But please try to have an open mind, because basic English can make traveling more fun, and there are sometimes students who tell me that, thank you, teacher, I thought I hated English, but you made it more interesting, and that's the best feedback I can get because I know I'm a good teacher, but if I'm able to change your mind and get you to study and enjoy, it's, it's really, really useful. Okay, so let's get started. Hello, everybody. Adam here again with a video. Of course, you don't have to watch it, as I mentioned in the intro, and especially the first part. We're going to jump into a video here, and you can skip this if you want, like this is video is just, if you're interested, we will not do it in class. So if you are interested, you can watch it, but let's play it. And basically you're just trying to answer each of these questions. Okay. And while you are listening, I will disappear so that you can see it in better quality. Okay. So let's check that out. meaning path to the north, is an alluring country, abundant with thousands of islands. Each winter, it plays host to a surreal ice music festival. He made it to look like my real cello, so... That's really, it. you know, it's very difficult to make a precision instrument with ice. See, now I'm playing without a glove. Yeah. I could only play for five minutes. Concerts take place in an intimate snow amphitheater where world-class musicians collaborate, providing unexpectedly beautiful music. It's an emotional experience in which the Ice Music Festival mirrors the landscape as the sounds intermingle with pristine falling snow and spaciousness of both the land and soundscape.
biggest challenge by far is building the instrument. Ice with superior sounding qualities is harvested, then transported by utility sled, snowmobile and range rover to the charming ski village of Yilo. So this is uh, going to be used for the marimba. It is meticulously carved and tuned into ethereal sounding instruments for the annual Ice Music Festival. Wherever you look, there is only one color. The color of ice. Okay, so that's a little weird, but also pretty interesting. Now let me bring my face back. And here I am. Hi. So let's go through the answers one by one. This happens in, right, Norway. They play ice instruments, okay, instruments, you know, like cello or violin. It looks like his real, and there I just said it, cello. The man plays music for five minutes or hours. It's actually five minutes because his hand got cold. The music is or isn't beautiful? Well, I think we can say it is beautiful. They play music in a cool or cold place? Definitely cold. The ice get sorry, the ice goes to a ski or a big village? What kind of village was it? It was a ski village. And they make or they cut the ice? They cut the ice to make the instrument. Okay, so that's just a little introduction to make things a bit more interesting for the topic. Um, I will zoom in here. Okay, and we've got cold, ice, instruments, listen, music, and village. And we want to put those vocabulary down here. Okay, so if you want to pause the video, please do that. Three, two, one. But now I'm going to put them in there. So Nor Norway is a, what do you think? Norway is a cold place. They have an ice music festival there. People take ice to a ski village. They make instruments from ice. And people like to listen to the music. Okay, so there's the answers there. And I hope you got them all correct. Okay, and always remember you can pause the video if it's a little fast. Okay. All right, let's go to the next page. Okay. And here, so these are the months. Now let's move my face over here. Okay. And we're going to practice saying the months and just work on the pronunciation. So I'll say them quickly January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. November, December, okay? And of course, there are four seasons, right? There's winter, spring, summer, and fall, okay? And here they tell us there are four weeks in a month. There are 12 months in a year, of course, okay? So there, there are the things. And of course, the seasons, I mean, it different people have different thinking, but usually, you know, winter is like December, January, February, March, April, May, kind of spring, June, July, August, summer, September, October, November, fall. But in Canada, there's a lot more winter. And Korea, there's a lot more summer. Different places have a little bit different feeling about that. Okay. So let's go over here to the listening. we got a beautiful picture here. And this is the Monument to the Revolution in Mexico. Okay. So first, pronunciation, ordinal numbers. Now, 
ordinal numbers are a little different. Like we say one, two, three, ordinal numbers are first, second, third, fourth, like that. So look at the dates and notice how we write them. Practice saying the dates with a partner. So we got here, this is January 1st, okay? September 2nd, July 23rd, July 30th, okay? And again, here are the key ones, like first, second, third, but then fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Lots of th, 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 okay? So listen for the spelling. Pedro is flying home for summer vacation. Listen and write his last name, then circle the correct answer. So here we go. Let's catch that Pedro. Thank you for calling. My name is Diana. How may I help you? Hi. Um, I have a ticket for a July trip. I want to make a change. Okay. What's your last name, please? It's Lopez. L-O-P-E-Z. Okay, thanks. And your first... Okay, so how do we spell his name? Well, it's L O. P E Z. Okay. And Americans say Z, but British people and Canadians usually say Z. Okay. But it's the same thing. So L O P E Z for this one. Okay. Now, okay. So there's a few more questions, right? Like, where is he now? Where is he going? Okay. So let's catch those. Your last name, please. Oh, sorry. So let's uh let's do these. Sorry. It's Lopez. L O P E Z. Okay, thanks. And your first name? Pedro. P E D R O. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Now, let's see. You're going from Vancouver, Canada to Mexico City. Yes, that's right. You're okay. Did you catch that? Where is he now? So she said one more time. Vancouver, Canada to Mexico City. Right. Vancouver, Canada to Mexico City. So we know it's Vancouver to Mexico City. Okay. So we can close that. All right. And now we're listening right? We're listening for the dates. Okay. So this is a different one, but it's the same listening. So let's do that. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Now let's see. You're going from Vancouver, Canada to Mexico City. Yes, that's right. You're leaving on July 23rd and you return to Canada on August 27th. Yes, but I want to change the dates. Is that okay? Um, let me see. Yes, with your ticket, that's fine. What are your new dates, Mr. Lopez? I want to leave Vancouver on July 30th. Okay. And I want to return home on September 2nd. Okay, let me check. I'm sorry, that day isn't good. How about the 3rd? Let's see. Yes, the third is okay. But, you know, September 4th or 5th is better. Those days are less expensive. I'll do the fourth then. Great. So now you are leaving for Mexico City on July 30th and coming back to Vancouver on September 4th. That's perfect. Have a great trip, Mr. Lopez. Okay, so let's see if you caught those. His first original one was July 23rd, okay? And the new one is July 30th, the leaving day. And the returning, it was August 27th, again, the TH, but the new date is September 4th, okay? So I hope you caught those. And again, this is a video. Go back and listen one more time if you missed it. All right, and then last one for listening is here. Okay, 
And again, I want to make a, okay. And you're just putting in the vocabulary here. Okay. So have a listen. Thank you for calling. My name is Diana. How may I help you? Hi. Um, I have a ticket for a July trip. I want to make a change. Okay. What's your last name, please? It's Lopez. L O P E Z. Okay, thanks. And your first name? Pedro. P E D R O. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Now let's see. You're going from Vancouver, Canada to Mexico City. Yes, that's right. You're leaving on July 23rd, and you return to Canada on August 27th. Yes, but I want to change the dates. Is that okay? Um, let me see. Yes, with your ticket, that's fine. What are your new dates, Mr. Lopez? I want to leave Vancouver on July 30th. Okay. And I want to return home on September 2nd. Okay, let me check. I'm sorry, that day isn't good. How about the 3rd? Let's see. Yes, the 3rd is okay. But, you know, September 4th or 5th is better. Those days are less expensive. I'll do the 4th then. Great. So now you are leaving for Mexico City on July 30th and coming back to Vancouver on September 4th. That's perfect. Have a great trip, Mr. Lopez. All right, so let's see how many expressions you caught. So I want to make a change, okay? And then there was like a long listening. And then he said, yes, that's right. Yes, with your, right? Ticket, that's fine. So he wanted, she wanted to check if it was okay to change it. And that mm, isn't good. Well, that day isn't good. Those days are less expensive. And have a good trip, Mr. Lopez. Okay. As always, go back and listen if it's a little fast here. All right. All right. So let's go to the next page. Okay. And here we are over here. So the first one is, I'll just read it to you just for the pronunciation. But this is something, obviously, we're going to practice more in class, right? So here's Tony and, and Lena, right? Um, I don't think there's audio. I checked before and I still don't see it. Okay. Um, so, you know, Tony, it's so crowded. And look, there's a parade over there. Is today a holiday? I'm not sure. Let me check my phone. Okay. It says it's St. Patrick's Day. St. Pa Patrick's Day? What's that? I have no idea. Let me see. It says St. Patrick's Day is on March 17th. That's today. It also says on St. Patrick's Day, people celebrate all things Irish. Well, it looks like fun. Come on, let's watch the parade. Okay, so that's the, the best I can do for the voice acting. And here's the listening here. Um, so we'll do that in class. <laughs> for now, we'll just listen to my voice. Um, and here, you know, some speaking strategy. Here are some expressions you know, that are quite good for when, you know, saying you know or don't know something. So here's a different voice. Saying you know or don't know something. Is today a holiday? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Now I'm just going to repeat these words just so the translator works down below. Okay. So yes, it is. No, it isn't. This means you are certain. Certain yes or certain no. Maybe is less certain. I'm not sure. Right. I'm not certain at all. I don't know means just don't know. And I have no idea means 100% I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. 
So the first one is we don't really have we don't really know the answers to these, okay? But we can, you know, we can check the answers now. So these are the expressions you would practice, but when when is Mexico's Independence Day? Um well, I I can I, I have a pretty good Cinco de Mayo is Cinco means 5. <laughs> so I'm going to guess May 5th. So I'm certain it's May 5th. Let's check. See, I'm wrong. I thought it was May 5th, so I shouldn't be certain. So you can see, I should have said, I don't know, maybe it's May 5th, okay? Uh, next one, where is the new year, sorry, where is the new year called uh, Hagmone? I'm, I, I'm pretty sure, or I should say, maybe it's Scotland. Let's check. It is, yay. But I can't say this word, okay? Hagmone or Hagmone. I'm not sure. I'm not Scottish. Okay. Next one. Where does Children's Day happen on May 5th? Okay. Let's see. I'm pretty sure. I'm certain it's ah, in Korea and Japan, right? So we should know that one. What holiday is on October 31st in, in the United States? Definitely. I'm sure it's Halloween. Okay. So this, you don't have to know the answers. It's just a chance to use these expressions for when you're guessing or giving an answer. Okay. So we can skip this. All right. And here is the grammar is WH questions with prepositions. Now prepositions, we did them last time too. They're on, at, in, but today, you know, we've got on. Okay. Um, for this one. So what, what day is St. Patrick's day on? Right. Again, the time, the parade is at 11 o'clock. Okay. Here's the question though. What time is the parade at? I live in Brazil. What country do you live in? She lives with her parents. Who does she live with? He listens to hip hop. What kind of mis music does he listen to? Okay, so you can see the preposition for the question is at the end. Okay, so like this one, students usually get a little confused. Who does she live with? We did it last time, but also who um, who do you study with or who do you go to the movies with? Okay, and it just says here when we make questions, uh, question forms for those sentences, the preposition moves to the end of the sentence, as you can see here. Okay. So let's do a little practice here first. Okay. So look at the photos. Uh, well, actually, we'll go down here. I want to jump to this. So we're going to complete the questions about the festival. Use the prepositions in the box. So let's have a look at this. Okay. And again, this is where you should pause the video and have a think. Okay, pause time's over. Now let me show you the answers. What city is the festival? So you've got city, right? What preposition goes with city? Well, what city is the festival in? Because it's a big thing. So city, in, that's the one that goes together. Month is a big month. So what month is it? Big city, big month, big time, in right? What kind of costume do the men put? This one's a little hard. What kind of... So in the morning, we our clothes. We put on our clothes. Okay. So this is an expression, put on. It's in the morning, put on your clothes. What houses do the nam go, right? So last time we did go somewhere, go two who are they looking who are they looking what's the preposition who are they looking for what do they listen what do they listen to or what do they listen for two is okay too okay uh, because they listen for like a sound listen to music okay so both are fine but this one is for because it's just a sound okay and what do they write? Here we go. What do they write in? 
Okay, so they write in their journal or they write in their book. So that's the answers there. Now let's go to the grammar. Okay, and it's the same, you know, the same hints here. And again, it's good for you to pause the video, but I'm going to keep going. If you want to stop it and try, that's up to you. And you could maybe go one by one. So I'm going to give the answers. I'll try to go a little slower, but you can pause it and have a guess for each one. Okay. So here's number one. The first one is, what are you thinking about? There's the preposition there. Next one, number two, where do you come from? Number three, who do you study with? Okay. And number four, what floor do you live on? Okay, because floor we say on the fifth floor or on the second floor. Number five, who do you send emails to? Six, what city do you live in? And seven, what kind of podcasts do you listen to? Okay. And number eight, which school? Oh, I'll let me just push the button. Which school do you go to? Okay. So those are the prepositions in the questions at the end. Okay. But like with floor, it's on. Okay. Send to live, you know, for city, live in. For listen, because it's a podcast, listen to or listen to music. And which school do you go to for this one? Okay. So pause here if you want, but I'm going to close it. And let's go back to the book. And for this one, we are going to do it um, in class. Okay. Um, so yeah, always we do like a little speaking activity in class. Of course, you can practice this with your friends or something. But for now, uh, we're going to stop here. And again, remember, you don't have to watch these. These are just here to help you. And I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.